Since its founding in 1893, Phi Gamma Delta's new chapter has played a vital role in the college lives of over 1,600 of us who were chosen to live, laugh, and learn among friends in this special house. In 1982, the city of Madison found this stately Phi Gamma Delta home among the leading historic properties in the city and designated it as an official landmark. Unfortunately, at that time, this building, the pride of Langdon Street, was literally crumbling into the lake. The first alumni advisors gathered in the spring of 1983. We evaluated the condition of the fraternity system and the campus generally. The chapter was performing well academically, financially, and in campus activities. Every rush was better than the one before. We concluded that the time had come to make an investment in Phi Gamma Delta's future. We went to Don Ebert from the class of 1928, then publisher of the Milwaukee Journal, and asked for his advice. With his guidance and generous support, the call for help went out to alumni across the nation. We asked simply for a commitment which would help us protect the precious heritage of Phi Gamma Delta. The response has been overwhelming. In a few short years, not only were we able to raise a large amount of money, but we've seen old friendships renewed and warm memories rekindled. We've had the help of brothers like Harold Kubley from the class of 1927 who helped us reconstruct the rich heritage of Frank Lloyd Wright. John Walsh, the championship University of Wisconsin boxing coach, is among those who have volunteered countless hours serving on special planning committees. And Gene Lynn, a 1954 graduate and nationally known real estate developer came forward and offered to make significant financial support immediately available. The support of members of our leading families, like Ed and Rick Bolenbeck, who, from their Appleton, Wisconsin law office, contacted classmates near and far and encouraged them to participate. The University of Wisconsin head basketball coach, Steve Yoder, a Phi Gam from the Illinois Wesleyan chapter, led a successful drive to involve Fijis who live in Wisconsin but were not members of Mu Chapter. With the help of 80 other volunteers and hundreds of donors, we broke every known fraternity fundraising record and began an exciting new era in the history of our chapter and university. In this video presentation, we want to illustrate where we are today and where we are determined to be when the chapter celebrates its centennial in a few years. I guess it was all started by our undergraduates. The landmark designation made the house itself more important. At first, I don't think we wanted to believe it. In the house, everything was burned out, patched up, and broken down. Sadly, nothing had been done since Lauren Morton's work in 1968, and nothing mechanical or structural had been done since the place was built in the early 1920s. We retain an architect locally respected for his work with historic properties. We asked him for a design which would preserve and enhance the integrity of the Frank Lloyd Wright plan while making everything more durable. They asked me to restore the old design while bringing it into the 80s. This also included upgrading the electrical, plumbing, heating, and fire protection. And oh yeah, they wanted to make sure everything was indestructible. I always tell my people to look for possibilities, not problems. In this case, the problems were all too obvious. I think the first phase turned out very well. I'm proud of what we were able to do, responding to difficult challenges of economy and historic renovation. As word of the renovation spreads and more visitors tour the house, we receive compliments in many forms, cards, letters, phone calls, and meaningful increases in donations. The first phase of renovation during the summer of 1986 concentrated on the second and third floor dormitory areas. In addition to work on the dormitory rooms, the first phase also included work on the entrance, the reception room, and the heating and electrical systems in the house. 
The entry has been expanded by eliminating the front closet, which created a long private hallway. And by routing traffic in the hallway, the reception room is no longer a thoroughfare, but an impressive room where our guests can be received. The dormitory hallways have been significantly changed to be more durable and attractive. Right away, you'll notice the new light fixtures and crown moldings. The rooms on the second and third floor have been remodeled completely. Inside, we've got electrical outlets and phone jacks, and every room is furnished with bunk beds and wardrobe storage cabinets. <laughs> in fact, the furniture and finishes are proving to be extremely durable. Actually, I've heard a story about a supplier who, after being told the specifications of this project, <laughs> asked us what prison we were remodeling. All of the rooms, but one, are in the shape of an L to make the most efficient use of available space. And on the second floor, we've restored one room to the original suite arrangement. We call it the quad. We've moved the old card and TV room. Now it's a little bigger, and it opens up the second floor corridor. And we've replaced the old boiler in the basement with several efficient pulse furnaces. They're located throughout the house and controlled by computer chips. All that's been done so far looks beautiful. And needless to say, we're all very proud. We're the only chapter on campus with this kind of alumni interest and support. John Center is the Building Association General Counsel. Together with Dick Pearson, our association president, their leadership is one reason everything has gone smoothly. We've asked John to share the Building Association's vision for continued improvement and growth at 16 Langdon. So far, much of what we've done has been structural and mechanical. It was expensive, but we did it right because we're not planning on doing it again. We're now working with Arlen Kai's firm to plan the next phase. We feel about half the essential work has been completed. We're making plans for the great hall, the kitchen, the dining room, the bar room, the ladies' restroom, and some understated landscaping. A vital part of our plans is an ongoing maintenance program and a commitment to the quality of undergraduate life. We've seen a dramatic increase in active alumni interest. I think increased alumni participation is the most important long-term result of the Landmark Preservation Program. The chapter's future depends on renewed interest of alumni everywhere. Our goal is to bring back old friends from every class and era, and with them bring back our best customs and traditions. John Center and Dick Pearson have made a lot of progress at the house possible, and so has Dave Schuster in his role as the chapter advisor, more formally called the Purple Legionnaire. There's a good group of fellows running the house. When I'm there for Monday night dinner and a chapter meeting, I can feel a certain warmth, a special bond of friendship and support. The pledge program is healthy. It seems that the negatives have been changed into positives. Wisconsin changed the drinking laws recently, and the chapter has responded with dry rush programs and invitation-only parties. From what I've seen, the Fijis are leaders on campus. Our undergraduates are leaders and our graduate brothers are leaders too. From cities across the nation, we've seen a remarkable outpouring of support. Over 500 parents, friends, and alumni have already given generously through their tax-deductible contributions and their renewed commitment to the traditions of the chapter. These brothers and friends have helped a dream of renovation become a reality. In the months and years ahead, we'll finish what we've started. We'll get the house back once again to the grand and romantic place it was meant to be. I hope you can continue to be a part of this exciting adventure. The rich tradition of Phi Gamma Delta is alive and well in Madison. And with your help, it will grow stronger. <laughs>